And, and so that was true in our public markets experience as well, just on a tiny little time scale, you know, 90 days, which is an absurd timeline to think about a business. You know, I think that the lessons that I learned a lot of lessons, but part of what inspired us to start Satori was the way that we saw the capital markets as, as a consumer of capital. We saw this sort of systemic challenge that, that a lot of the providers of capital didn't understand the sort of ground truth. So you know, metaphorically, um, a real estate investor that's never actually done their own real estate project has a, a limited set of information to work with. And so in, in our case, if you had never led an operating company, um, you might have a limited perspective to work with. So that was one of the issues. The second issue was time horizon. What we noticed as CEOs, my co-founder, Randy, was also a CEO, um, as well as he spent a good bit of time in the capital markets. This, this time horizon issue is a real thing. And it's not just for, well, you know, day-to-day -day trading or this quarterly problem for public companies. Um, it's a real problem even in the alternative assets business where you know, if you might have a theoretical five-year time horizon because you've got this you know, five years to deploy and five years to harvest, if you're going to own an asset for five years, your average duration of your mind is two and a half years, right? right? Just math. And, and so when now your average duration is two and a half years, the decisions you make are different than if your lens is, I, I own the asset. I'm just an owner. And it doesn't mean I don't sell. It just means... I'm an owner. And if there's a better owner of it for me, for any reason, including an economic reason, then sure, oh, I can talk about selling. And so we saw these funny things happen around fund life, um, behavior in the very beginning of funds, behavior in the very end of funds that all the way down in the bottom in the business, you go, is this creating business value or is it destroying it? What we saw was by and large, the, the, the nuances of the way these funds worked, weren't, it wasn't helping. Said another way, it was destroying value and there was missed opportunity. And, and so that was true in our public markets experience as well, just on a tiny little time scale, you know, 90 days, which is an absurd timeline to think about a business as an investor. But as you know, you know many public markets owners are sort of hitchhikers. They're there this week and, and off they go. Um, so certainly saw that in, in my experience day to day. And a very dramatic difference, I like guess, as, as an owner, and I was the largest owner of, of the company's shares as well. I own um, almost a third of the business. So that made for some new dynamics as well, where the difference between the investors that really thought like, hey, I'm a part owner in this business and I'm a partner with Sonny and his team and what they're building. The way we interacted was completely different. The priorities they had were different. They were asking me things about like, how's the business doing? Um, the, the temporary hitchhikers, they just want to know how's the stock doing, right? Exactly. They're just getting in the car for a little ride and, and off they went. It's a very different experience there. Um, and then here's, here's the last piece um, that actually ties the first two together. And it was this, we, we call it conscious capitalism. Now, we didn't have words for it at, at the time, um, but my experience is many of the investors didn't, appreciate or care about the things that were important to the business, that the sort of entire lens for decision-making was through a financial lens. 